Welcome YouTube track and field people out there, uh, especially you athletes looking for some workout tips. And you, most of you might already be doing this, especially you guys who trying trying to kind of do extra work outside of what your coach shows you on your weekends, holidays. You know, but right now you should be working full time with your coach. You high school guys, you collegiate guys, definitely the professional athletes. But anyway. It's Greg M. on the go, two-time Olympian, silver medalist, trying to share some information I found online, and we can educate ourselves together, because I am still learning, you know, and you know stuff that I learned way back when. I wish I had that the knowledge that they have now, the scientific processes and and knowledge that they apply to track and field now. I wish I had that when I was, uh, you know, in back in my day in my young athletic days. But anyway, enough said about that. Here's a workout for the 100 meter and 200 meter acceleration and speed. Shot sprinters, 100, 200 meter, 100 meter hurdles and so forth. But anyway, and it says here, I got this off of Pinterest. Like I said, I know you guys watch YouTube and get a lot of workout programs there. The good resources there too. You know, a lot of um, college coaches and professional coaches drop videos there for free. And I got this from Pinterest. So, um, to become the fastest sprinter, you need to come out of the blocks with the great, with a great acceleration. Once you reach your maximum speed, the athlete must maintain it throughout the rest of their race. So, just to cover a little bit, not, they're talking about dry phase. When, when I was an athlete, I didn't know anything about dry phase or if the, the coach the, the way the coach explained dry phase was you come out low and you gradually come up like an airplane about to take off and hit the skies that was the dry phase training I got and even then I didn't have starting blocks I was training on a dirt track in my high school days when I went to high school in Jamaica and um at first, I was doing it like the guys did in the in the nineteen forties and and fifties. You know, you dig a hole in the ground and you know put your feet in there. You know, to simulate placing it on a block to to drive out. And even then, I was still popping up. So imagine if I had learned drive phase and done proper strength training for for speed and power and acceleration. You know, in other high school, I ran ten fours and. 10 fives and 10 threes and 21 seconds, you know, flat. And, and I could have probably been a better athlete because even then I wasn't training specifically for my event. I was doing a lot of speed endurance and endurance work and never hardly ever broke down to specific speed mechanics, you know, working on dry phase, hardcore speed, high intensity speed training, that kind of thing. You know, by the time we got down to that, it was maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks before the major event. You know, and that by that time, you, you still hadn't developed your fast twitch muscle fibers. You know, my, my slower twitch muscle fibers were developed. But the reason why I could sprint was off a natural ability. But even then, you risk injury because you, you, you didn't have the strength development to manage the explosiveness of a 100 meter, 200 meter. And we we're more so conditioned to run in the longer distances that when you do try to exert um, yourself over the shorter sprint, we, we risk getting injured. And that happened to me at times, you know, we didn't have the proper balance. So, as you can see, if you're reading along, in order to do this, your training must focus on both acceleration and speed, like I just covered. The following contains workout that, that focus on these two categories. When doing these workouts, be sure to do a proper warm up, and as always, make sure you proper do proper warm up, dynamic stretching, do your knee drills, your A's and B's, and your skips, you know stuff like that. This includes some preliminary movement stretches and drills. For the best result, you should run these workouts at described uh, pace and distance with extreme focus on a competition mindset. It is essential to do the type of sprinting you will be doing in competition during practice. And like I was saying, back in my day, I did a lot of workouts. I was a, 
100, 200 meter runner. Why was I doing 600 meters in practice and 800 meter and 1,000 meter runs and doing 15, 300 meter interval run, run, you know, and then expect to run them at high, you know, you know, fast speeds and repeat it. You know, that was more like I was gearing up for, a, you know, 1,500 meter race. Because even as a sprinter, yeah, sprinters do 300 meter runs, but we don't need to do 15, 300 meter or 10 times 500 meter run. And I was a sprinter. Yeah, I had a, a lot of endurance, but I was slow. I developed my slower twitch muscle fibers. You know, look up what slow twitch muscle fibers is and fast twitch muscle fibers. And you get the, the differentiation, different, differentiation, uh, the difference, my tongue getting tied up. So you should always practice what you're going to practice in competitions. But your sprinter practice, your start, your acceleration, your drive phase, uh, you, you get up in your running form, relaxation, proper arm drive, you know, knee lift, turnover, running off the track, ball of your feet, a slight lean, you know, not your head up high, um, not leaning too forward because then you'll force yourself into, you know, um, either a back lift or you're overstriding and you'll, you'll lose your composure and, and tighten up. Acceleration. These workouts will be over shorter distances and have intense reps with close to full recovery. Focus on exploding, focus on exploding forward and increasing turnover. Again, let me read it again. When you're working on the shorter distance and have intense reps with close to full recovery, and I believe in the full recovery, especially when we are working at a high intensity, and you focus on exploding forward and working on that turnover, especially coming out the blocks. Once you hear that gun, and you should, should practice with a gun. Don't practice with someone saying go, because that's not the same thing when you go there in real competition. So here are some examples here. And, and I like these examples that they have on the internet here. You got the 25 meter, 30 meter, 35 meter times four. You know what I'm saying? Do four reps of that. So you're gonna do that like four times. Come out the blocks for 25, come out the blocks for 30 meter, come out the blocks for 35, and you have three more times to do that. But you're working on different phases. You know, you're working on just reaction coming out for 25 meters. Then the 30 meters, you're working on your drive phase, right? And then maintaining that up to 35 meters, you know, just quick turnovers, acceleration, quick turnovers. So the first 25 meters, you know, you can practice um, just coming out, reaction, reacting to the gun, you know, proper placement in your blocks, stuff like that. You know, make sure your, arm, your, your hands are behind the line, arms lot straight. Your angles coming up in the set position. You should have pressure on the, on the back. Your, your legs should not be straight on the, on the back of the blocks. So again, focus on explosive quick movement, low heel recovery, arm swing, and posture. And work with your coach or with your fellow athlete, your, your, team, your teammate to focus on these things. And your coach should should um, help you discover how to do these drills, and if not, showing you videos of other athletes the proper showing proper mechanics. So after yeah, I'm doing the thirty, they do thirty meter, thirty five, fifty times four. Again, you're working on dry phase. By that time, now you should understand what reaction time is, reacting to the gun. Um, your dry phase act. Um, quick turnovers, accelerating, and you practice that all the way up to 50. By the time you get out of that 30 meter, you should already be coming up. You know, you, you, you keep your head down for the first seven to 10 steps. And those are gonna be quick. And you could cover, you know, you could probably cover, you know, 25 meters in your first 10 step. And then by the time you get past 35, you should be gradually coming up at the 35 mark, the 30 to 35, and getting up into your sprinting form at 40, 50. You should hit top speed at 60, and then that's where you have to work on maintaining 
um, your, 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 your body composure, your relaxation, arm drive, quick turnovers, focusing down the finishing line. After each run, rest for two to three minutes. After an entire rep, 30 to 35, after an entire rep, 30, 35, 50, rest for five minutes. So after each run, you rest for, um, I mean, you do 30, 35, 50, rest two minutes, right? When I mean, you do it again, rest two minutes, and you go again. After you complete an entire rep, then you, you know, then you do a five minute recovery and you go at it again because you want to you want to have full recovery you don't want to run um the risk of injury with poor recovery time like for the above workout pay a lot of attention to proper sprinting mechanics 60 meter sled pulls another example of developing explosiveness working against um you know the resistance of the sled they help you to practice driving out the blocks using the power and acceleration and arm drive. So after each 60 meter sled, sled pull, rest for three minutes. And here's a nice reminder here, do not do the sled pulls out of the blocks. <laughs> so be careful. I know sometimes people use resistant bands where you work in teams or somebody will put a strap up, one of those little bands around your waist and somebody stay behind and you come out the blocks and they you know apply resistance with, the, with your teammate, with your person holding, you know, whether the rope or some kind of resistant bands and you have to force your way out. Some people do it like that. So, but with, with the sled, you definitely can't do that. You know, you probably run the risk of injury. So after, then you have 60 meter times 10 reps. After each 60 meter run, rest five minutes. These runs should be at 100% output. And, and from what I'm reading here, this is geared for like no competitive season indoors or when you're getting ready for the outdoor season you start getting into these type of workouts because no you got to practice for competition you're you're you're, you're going on race specific events you know you're not just doing con you know you're no longer in the conditioning phase if you hadn't got that done you're gonna have a bad season if you didn't do that before the the, the competitive season you're gonna have a hard time probably get injured speed these workouts will will be over longer distance. They still place an emphasis on high intensity runs and have full recovery. These speed, these speed workouts should not be done out of the blocks. So you accelerate for 45 meter, you float for 60 meter, accelerate for 70 meters times five. So that's something you can probably do around the track. Cause you're gonna probably start from say the, the 100 meter and you're gonna accelerate 45 meter come up boom 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 you know head down drive phase arm drive coming up proper mechanics then you float for 60 meters so you're working on stride frequency turning over get a, a rhythm and then you accelerate again for 70 meters once you hit 70 meters your 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 um relax before the workout place cones at the appropriate measurements so measure it off the first acceleration phase should be focused on an intense start the float phase is focused on maintaining speed during the second acceleration phase sprint and try to increase your speed by increasing turnover then you have eight times 150 meter runs and look, I must say, I'm reading off this program that I found on the internet. And, and it's similar to some of the workouts I did back in my time. But I, I'm going to borrow these for education purposes. Because um, my workout programs that I had from back in the day when I was a collegiate athlete and, uh, um, you know, competing nationally for Jamaica and training, I somehow lost that. My workout program so but thank goodness wealth of information is on the internet that i can kind of borrow and then input these things to kind of show you since i don't have my own workouts anymore 
So a lot of these I'll be borrowing programs and then just kind of explain to you. But this is being explained very good right here. Oh, kind of lost track. So like when you do these sprints, the four, you know, this can be like a day's workout, one day. The one time, the eight time 150 meter run, that can be a, like your, 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 um, your Tuesday workout or your Wednesday workout, depending on how you and your coach planned it. Or if you're following me, you can um, do the shorter sprints. Like in the very top here, this could be like what, after you warm up and you do your drills, this could just be like your block start workout. Work, you know, you're working on your drive phase and acceleration. And then these down here, is what you can do after you, you, you do your block work. You see what I'm saying? Your 45 meters uh, accelerate from float for, uh, 60, accelerate 70. And then that could be your day's workout for the day. You cool down, get a light stretch, hit the weight room, go home. Your 150 meter run. Uh, your, so 150, rest for three minutes. Make sure to these with, um, I guess it means to do these with intensity, running each 150 at around 80 to 90% of your maximum speed. So you're not going to go 100% because you're doing eight, eight, eight times 150. But you're going to still work on your technique and your acceleration and your relaxation. Okay? You're going to have some curve. This help you with your 200 meter runs, you know, and you know, sometimes you can work on doing your first 50 hard, relax 50, kind of like the, you know, a little bit of the accelerate for 45, but you're going to accelerate for 50, float for 50, accelerate the last 50, last 50, you focus on your relaxation, arm drive, strike frequency, you know, and, and you know, just the proper mechanics. Stay and relax and focus on your form. You know, don't don't get tight. You start to get tight, you start to back lift. You're gonna lose your form and you're gonna start leaning too much forward and feel like you're gonna fall flat in your face. You're just gonna, you know, break. You know, you're, you're not gonna, gonna be able to accelerate. You know, you know, this time of the year now, especially going to outdoors, you're 150 times. You, you may not even do eight times that. You're going to start narrowing it down. You know, you can start doing six or five at, you know, 16 second pace. If you're a woman, you might be doing them in, in 18, 19, you know, stuff like that. You know, as you get into the outdoor season, you might only be doing four of these. After you do some, some, some block starts working on the dry phase where you're doing them much faster, full recovery is, you know, you're collegiate runner, even high school, you know, high school senior, you know, you're doing your, your, your 150s, competitive pace, 15, 16 seconds. World-class guys going to be doing them between 14, 15 seconds. And here's another day. This could be like, you know, uh, a Friday workout. Because you're going to have some days where your coach might want to interject some speed endurance. That could be a Wednesday where you're doing, you know, um, either 300 meter uh, runs or, um, or 200 meter. So you want to, you know, hard, easy, hard, easy, hard, you know. You don't want to work hard sprinting every day. And you, you need proper recovery. So six times 120, three times 90. And these are pretty good speed, speed workout. After each 120 meter, rest for five minutes. The 120 seconds should be run at 85. So the 120 meters should be run at 85% intensity. You know, your coach might give you a time and say, run these in, you know, 13 seconds or something like that. 90 meters, same thing. You might tell you to run them in like, you know, eight to nine seconds for your 90 meter runs, you know. And after each 90 meter, walk back and run the next one, i.e. no rest. Even though the walk, the walk back is kind of considered like a recovery. These should be done at maximum intensity. So you want to really get up and going. You know, and most likely you're going to be doing these from a standing start or a rolling start. 
and you, you know you're gonna still practice you know once you get that foot strike the ground your power accelerate and get up in your running form you're gonna still kind of try and come out in there coming from a standing start you still try to start out low from a standing position or three point start you know you're gonna have to work that out with your coach there's another day's workout two times 80 meter three times 150 after each run rest for five minutes the run should be at 90 percent plus intent plus intensity so again you know you work that out with the coach and you should have a good idea you know with good conditioning and well into your, your track season you should have a good feel for what 90 percent is you know it's not going to be 100 percent so if you're doing 180 it's more than likely you're going to be doing them you know 18 19 seconds in world class guys probably run 180 is in 17. Um, anyway, after each run, rest of five minutes, the run should be at 90% intensity. With a longer rest time and fewer reps, aim to get close times for runs at the same distance. So, there you go. Like I get, you know, I got these off of um, Pinterest. You can go in there and find this very same workout and follow it with your coach. Tweak it, you know, to your... Um, your days when when you you don't have competition and kind of um, again tweak it when you get ready to compete. You definitely when you get ready to go to a weekend track meet. You definitely want to make sure you you, you ease off of the heavy intensity work because you're gonna be working out hard um, for your Saturday meet. Or if you have, if if it's a major meet where you're competing Friday Saturday, you definitely got to be careful how you cut off your training. You know so. Hopefully y'all got this information. Good workout. And um, this is very good for, for you uh, sprinters, 100, 200 meter guys. You want to be sprint sprint specific. You know, at this time of the season, you don't want to be doing 10 times 300 meter runs. You know, um, you come back on Tuesdays and you're running, you know, 15, 150 at slow paces. You know, you come back Wednesday and you're doing, you know, 10 times 200 meters and you come back Thursday and you're, you're, you're running 15, 110 meter sprints. You know, distant runners might do something like that, but as a sprinter, you want to be working on sharpness. Because, you you know, you, you only want to gear up for the doing the heat semifinals and finals and definitely be able to repeat. You condition yourself to repeat, but at higher intensity, at competitive, you know, competition speed. And being able to practice your mechanics, relaxation, drive phase, you know, your reaction to your blocks, you know, one fast start and you're out. And you don't want to work so hard. And then, you know, because you didn't practice your reaction time and, and practice discipline and patience, you, you're trying to anticipate the gun, jump the gun, fast start, and you, you, you miss out on your season, especially at a major championship. Worse if you make it to the Olympics and you was one of the, the you know the favorites to, to to win a medal, gold, silver, or, or bronze. So, like I said, guys, you know always work with your coach. Of course, anything that I say here is for informational, educational purposes. You can find these online yourself, but work with your coach. Make sure you're healthy, and just don't follow the program blindly. And um, make sure you, 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 you do your workouts properly and safely. But always work on mechanics. Work on your form to keep it simple. Because to me, you cannot perform efficiently and, and run any faster than your form will allow you to run. If you're all over the place, your arms all over the place, you're going to be... I mean, you might still run fast, but just think how much faster you can run if you smooth out your form and work on your arm drive. How much better you can be you know with a proper drive phase and a quick start and know how to stay relaxed and and just keep driving work on not tightening up to where you decelerate faster than everybody else because sometimes the person who can stay rel relaxed the longest and maintain that stride frequency and that proper turnover rate that faster turnover rate at a more relaxed pace is going to win that race always whether it's the 100 200 or the 400 but anyway 
that's it that's all I want to bring to you guys you know something to help you along as you get ready for your next weekend meets and the outdoor meets um, next time I'll probably just cover some track meets with some results see who's um, doing what and who's going to be the, um, the the athlete to watch for the outdoors and the upcoming world championships so anyway I'm out for now it's a long video but wanted to cover some workout programs all right take care